first thing that a hater does is he starts to hate. So it's so obvious. Like I don't need to debate. I don't need to debate somebody that's proven my point by coming with, with negative energy. Like, I don't need to hate Terrence Bud Crawford in order for me to like Errol Spence. I am a man. I respect Terrence Bud Crawford. I take my hat and I acknowledge his greatness. I don't need to disrespect anybody that Terrence Bud Crawford has fought in order to come to my decision on who I think will win between him and Errol Spence. I don't have a crystal ball. So when it comes to boxing, the point of us watching two men fight is to see who's going to be victorious. If we already knew round for round, blow for blow, what the outcome was going to be for a fight, then what would be the purpose of fighting it and watching it? When fighters fight each other, they don't even have that much uh, confidence to say they know exactly what's going to happen and how it's going to happen. They visualize, visualize. They, they put in time of training and execution. Then they get in a ring and then they handle business. They are businessmen and they are warriors. They're not just sitting at home on YouTube Type of little hate messages like they know something. You don't know nothing. But I know one thing. I don't have to hate Terrence Bud Crawford. I never have and never will. I respect him. I don't have to hate any comments he's ever made. I don't have to go down his list of opponents and hate on them to discredit his resume. I don't have to do that. That's not what I do. And all you guys that hate Errol Spence, you start hating Errol Spence for all kind of stuff that's ridiculous. Because you are ridiculous. You hate on who he's fought. You hate on who he couldn't knock out. You hate on how big he is. You hate on uh, whatever little meticulous thing that you think you can pick out that's a flaw and say, I don't like him because of this. That's, the, that's not what this is about. We a different kind of a pedigree. Okay? It's not what we do here. See, I can look at all of Terrence Crawford's God-given gifts. I can look at his gifts. And then I can look at all of his attributes. What he's been blessed with and what he's mastered over his time of, of making himself into a warrior. Then I can look at Errol Spence. I can look at his God-given gifts. And then I can look at the fire that he's walked through to mold himself into the gladiator that he is. See, that's what I do. I don't just sit there and focus on weaknesses. I focus on strengths. focus on strengths. I don't focus on weaknesses. Weaknesses are something that you can fix. But if you find somebody's strength and, ex and turn it into a weakness, that's how you beat somebody. That's why it's so easy to beat you little guys on YouTube that's leaving hate comments. Because that's y'all that's y'all your only strength is y'all sitting there at a typewriter typing all day long. I don't even I don't even have a computer. I use my phone. I'm on my phone sometimes. Just okay. Yes. Okay. Have a good day. Yeah, thanks for watching. You know what I'm saying? Get the fuck out of here. It takes me like two seconds to respond on a comment to a hater. You ain't even worth my time. But you on my platform. I can make a whole video and just drop it on your head if you was worth my time. But you not. Okay. So Terrence Bud Crawford. His God given gifts. Why people love Crawford and his like I can watch Terrence Crawford fight all day because he's very 
unpleasant to the eye to watch because he's ambidextrous. That means he's equally talented with both hands. He can switch from orthodox right over into a southpaw seamlessly, effortlessly, effortlessly. And that's what makes him so special because he's been doing it since he first started fighting. He said that some coaches would even try to make him fight one way and he just would switch. And they would tell him to stop switching to the point where they just said, okay, you're gonna switch, then switch. So he has mastered the art of switching. He's a switch hitter. That's why some people love him to death. That's why I can watch him. That's his natural gift. That's a God-given gift to be able to switch from one stance to the next. That's why he's able to confuse and defeat many of his opponents. That's not hating. That's giving that man credit for his gift. You understand? Errol Spence's gift. Why I think Errol Spence's gift will either negate Terrence Bud Crawford's gift or at least bring him even Steven. His gift is that he's a natural southpaw. So, Terrence Bud Crawford switching from orthodox to southpaw is not going to confuse Errol Spence as much as it does his other, uh, other opponents in the past. Because I've seen, I've seen him fight other southpaws like Van Herden and destroy them. And I've seen him fight guys that are orthodox and break them down too. So, I, it, it makes sense if, if Terrence Bud Crawford did come in that fight and switch back and forth that Spence would be able to make adjustments as well because he's not he's not just a one dimensional fighter he has other levels too so he, if he's a natural southpaw then Terrence Bud Crawford and southpaw is not going to bother him as much as it bothers other people if he switches to orthodox then er, uh, Errol Spence can make that adjustment so like I said that's going to either want to bring them even Steven, or in my opinion, give Earl Spence a slight edge. His other gift, Terrence Bud Crawford that is, his other gift is that his brain is a genius inside the ring. Absolute genius. His brain takes the first couple of rounds and downloads you into his, his brain like, a, like the matrix, like a computer. He downloads all the information of how you fight. That's his second gift. The second gift is that he downloads you. Once he has you downloaded, then he knows everything that you're going to do before you do it. That's his gift. And like I said, he has moderate power in both punches. Moderate to high power, but not extremely high. Is moderate power to high power. Some punches he hit you with are soft, some punches he hit you with are hard, but he has decent strong power in both hands. But the reason why he hurts people and beats them is more because he has perfect timing. Because once he downloads you and he knows what you're gonna do before you do it, he times you and starts to embarrass you and he starts to break, break you down that way. That's a gift. That's me giving him credit. That's me saluting him. But what I'm saying, is with Errol Spence. His gift that either negates that gift or brings them even Steven. This is something that Terrence Bud Crawford doesn't do as well as Errol Spence because Errol Spence is naturally gifted in this area. He bulldozes and he is relentless. But his natural gift is the fact that he can bring so much speed, so much velocity, and so much acceleration on every single punch. All 12 rounds from round one to round 12 is a relentless onslaught 
of pinpoint accurate punches. Mostly well-placed body punches that break you down. And as the fight progresses, he gets stronger, he gets faster, and he gets more accurate. His power doesn't fade off. And all of his punches have power, high to over high. He doesn't have moderate punches. All of his power has a thud and an echo. You could hear it through the TV. You could hear it through the through the whole arena where everybody just ooh and ah from body punches because his punches are like Manny Pacquiao's one punch that he gave to Keith Thurman that folded him over in the 10th round. You could hear it. You could hear it was perfectly placed. It hit like a thud. And when he hit, you seen the reaction. Ah, he folded over instantly. Probably had to go use restroom. <laughs> all of uh, Errol Spence's, all of his punches sound like that through the whole fight. So imagine Manny Pacquiao one punch to Keith Thurman for 12 rounds over and over and over. That's his natural gift. His natural gift is that he creates leverage and velocity and speed and, and acceleration and his condition will allow him to do that for the entire 12 rounds, entire 12 rounds. So that's going to negate Terrence Bud Crawford downloading technique and figuring out your punches. Because even though if he knows what punches you're going to throw, he still has to engage. Terrence Bud Crawford is not going to circle outside <clears throat> and box outside with Errol Spence and stay around the ring and, and not engage. He's going to crack. He likes to crack. He likes to brawl too. So he has to come inside and brawl with Errol Spence in order for it to be a legitimate fight. So he's going to negate that downloading process because they're going to have to get inside the telephone booth. And inside the telephone, telephone booth, Errol Spence's technique and his power, naturally given strength and power, I think is better and is superior to Terrence Bud Crawford's power. Here's one more fact. Here's one more compliment. Here's one more salute to Terrence Bud Crawford. Terrence Bud Crawford is light on his feet. He's beautiful to watch in the ring because he's a natural boxer. He reminds me of Apollo Creed in, in Rocky Part 1 and 2. The way he boxes is 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 um, almost like I said. Now I want you to notice that so far I haven't had to say one negative thing about Terrence Bud Crawford. All I did was state his strengths his gifts and his abilities. And then I compared them to Errol Spence's gifts, his strengths and his abilities. For example, one of Terrence, Crawford, <clears throat> Terrence Bud Crawford's natural gifts is his, his ability to fight on the front foot and back foot. And he does it in a way that he has a perfect rhythm and he can dance around the ring. That's a natural born gift that no one does better at this current time. When I compare that to what Errol Spence does very well, Errol Spence is great at measuring his opponents and using his jab. He's also good at cutting off the ring. So when I think of Terrence Crawford circling around the ring, I can see how Errol Spence would be able to be like a rifle and keep his jab. And all he would have to do was keep him centered with that jab and keep him on the outside. So once, even if they had to bring it into the telephone booth, Errol Spence doesn't smother his punches. He creates leverage on all of his body shots. 
and he throws combinations from the bottom to the top very well with more power now like I said I haven't I haven't had to say anything disrespectful about Terrence or his competitors in the past I haven't had to point out any flaws which every fighter has a flaw both Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford they both have a flaw but I don't even have to focus on those right now all I'm doing and all you have to do is add up the factors for example who's who's the stronger fighter naturally bigger and stronger Errol Spence that's one factor who has the most experience you can say Terrence but who has the most welterweight experience because you look at Errol Spence and he's always been fighting at the well to wait. If you look at Terrence Crawford, his his resume with the well to wait is still shallow. So either you can look at it as even, how I look at it is a slight edge to, towards Errol Spence. If you look at their career path, watching the Joe Rogan fight or Joe Rogan interview, I apologize, you see that even Terrence Crawford said you know, he's about to turn 32 years old and he only sees himself fighting until his mid-30s, so a couple of more years. So what that tells me is he's wrapping up his career. If you look at Errol Spence, he's in a midpoint. He's still on a mission. What that tells me is he's still the hungrier fighter. So I have to give a slight edge towards Errol Spence in that manner. So when you match the skills, even when you match the power, Errol Spence, when you look at the technique, they cancel each other out. There's so many different factors that I could go on and on and on, but I'm not going to do that. All I'm saying is there's no need to hate and there's no need to come to these um, assumptions calling people, you know, cowards and and claiming that they're ducking. If you ask Terrence Crawford, how many times have they asked Terrence Crawford if he thinks Errol Spence is ducking him and he flat out says no. But you still have his fans that are saying the opposite of what Terrence is saying. See, that makes no sense. That's why on this channel we do things logically. We use common sense and we use respect. Like my man, Wolverine, Black 89, he disagrees. And I understand why he thinks that Terrence Crawford would edge out the fight. But he disagrees respectfully. Therefore, we can agree to disagree. Salute. But to Sal, Sal Hardy. I said I wasn't going to say your name, but hey, I'm old school. I grew up listening to Tupac. I'm going to say your name, Sal Hardy. You just a natural born hater with a genetic defect. Do yourself a favor. Go eat a bowl of sick dicks. This is Nocturnal Thoughts. Salute to the real. Death to the fake. I'm out.